For this video, we have the new Redmi Note 12 4G powered by the Snapdragon 685 chipset. I'm being very specific with the name here because there exists another 5G variant and another Redmi Note 12 5G for the China market. They, they are all different from each other and they are very confusing. But with the price of 799 locally here, is the Redmi Note 12 4G continuing the tradition of being a good budget phone? Let's find out. We start off as usual with the design and I mean it's nothing special really. Nothing caught my eye in particular except for the colour. This is closer to being a turquoise colour and the matte finish diffuses the light to make it look even nicer. However, it does catch a lot of fingerprints for whatever reason. Now we do have a total of 3 cameras here but only 2 of them can be used to take pictures. No idea why Xiaomi still included a 2 megapixel macro camera but here it is. The main camera takes good looking pictures overall I would say though the white balance is a bit hit and miss because in certain scenes like this uh, yeah the white balance is just off. The pictures are also a bit darker in terms of exposure than what I would have personally preferred but overall it has good details and good sharpness but just too dark for my liking and the white balance needs a bit more tweaking. As for the ultra angle camera, it kind of reminds me of another phone that we have reviewed recently. The noise level is rather high and the details, well let's just say that they are mostly gone because yeah, as what you can see in these pictures here, it's like a layer of blur is applied on top of the picture. I have to admit that I do like the exposure of this ultra angle camera more than the main camera. But there is one more weird quirk about Xiaomi's camera. By default, the HDR mode will be disabled and the HDR mode really does make a difference as well. For the performance, this is rather straightforward. We have done a dedicated video gaming test so you can check it out at the top right corner there. In short, the phone is running the Snapdragon 865 chipset and it's truly depending on what game you're playing. It can handle PUBG Mobile, COD Mobile and Mobile Legends to a certain extent but it will struggle to run games like Genshin Impact even at the lowest graphical settings. Um, we can see that it consistently dips below 30 FPS and I just don't think that you have a good time playing the game using this phone. I don't have anything against this phone because it is also considered an entry-ish level smartphone after all so yeah, the gaming performance is to be expected. The screen though, this is a different story. It's using a 6.67 inch AMOLED screen with the standard resolution of 2400 by 1080 pixels and it can go up to 120Hz refresh rate as well. I do have to highlight that Xiaomi by default selects 60Hz maximum out of the box so you have to head into the settings menu to change it to 120Hz yourself. Either way, the screen does look nice and from our tests, our color meter reports all these numbers here, virtually 100% of sRGB color gamut and the maximum and average delta E numbers are very low, so that is fantastic. The maximum brightness is also nothing to scoff at, it can reach a maximum of around 730 nits and you will have no issues using this phone outdoors. The battery life is also very simple here. We do have a 5000mAh battery. With that Snapdragon 685 chipset, we can get about 12.5 hours in our standardized test. But I do expect it to last a little bit longer, but this is fine. This phone also comes with a 33W charger inside the box and it can charge from 15% to completion in slightly less than an hour. That is actually faster than what I expected. The temperature only reaches 39 degrees Celsius maximum and that is very safe. Actually, this phone also supports 25 watts of fast charging via USB PD and we use our Ugreen Gun charger like usual and this phone can reach from 15% to completion in about the same time, slightly less than an hour and the temperature is also kept at 39 degrees Celsius maximum. That is good news because we don't have to bring Xiaomi's proprietary charger and cable to get the same charging speed. The software here is pretty much the same as any other Xiaomi phones that we have reviewed recently. So it's running on MIUI 14 on top of Android 13 and everything else remains the same. So I'm not going to talk about it here. You can watch our review of the Xiaomi 13 instead. And a few more things to mention. This phone uses a USB 2.0 port at the bottom and it has a triple card slot. Two nano SIM card slots and a single micro SD card slot. And that is actually really good. So after going through all of that, did the Redmi Note 12 4G live up to the tradition of being a good budget smartphone? Well, I'll say yes. For the price of 799 ringgit, this is a 
good phone that I can recommend to everyone who is seeking for a phone at this price point. There are certainly some drawbacks, particularly MIUI, but I can look past it because of its price. So that's it. That's all we have to share with you about this phone. If you have any questions, then do let us know. And oh yeah, audio jack. Good. Goodbye.